Let us all rejoice and be glad in it, Lord Jesus. Father God, we just thank you for the, 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 the congregation and all those who came in to hear your word from you, Lord Jesus. We bless the speaker of the house tonight, Lord Jesus. Give her the power, touch her from the crown of her head to the toes of her feet, to give a word, a word that we can take outside and tell the world about the God that we serve. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now for our affirmation of faith. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's only but one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us reverently sincerely declare our faith by use of the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe with the power of the Father Almighty, the maker of the heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born on the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. And he sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from which is to come to judge, the judge the in the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 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 Our hymn of praise to God be the glory. Y'all, good morning. Come on, let's give God some praise in this house. Come on, give him a little praise. We're about to bless the Lord for all the great things that He's done. We're gonna sing a little something that you know with with a um, Anthony Dawkins spin on it. Come on, put your hands together.
my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Well, good morning, Spotswood. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you, those who are here in person and those of you who are worshiping with us on our live stream. God bless you all. It's so, so good to see you. And we are grateful. It may be raining on the outside, but we have the sun, the sun, who is shining in our souls. So we are grateful for him today. God bless you. Good to see you. Are there any visitors in the house today? If there be any, God bless you. It's so good to see you. I just want to let you know that we don't require you to do or say anything. Should you like to say something, you may do so. Okay, but we're glad to see you. We're just imperfect people here at the spot, risking it all to make Jesus real, one life at a time. God bless you. We are so glad you're here with us today. And we have a welcome chant that we'd like to share with you. It's good to see Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. as always, we ask you to continue to pray for the sick and children and those that are, that are bereaved. I'm going to ask for a quick prayer for Sister Monique Simmons. She wasn't feeling well this morning. She went home, but she's okay. All right. Um, today, as you know, is uh, Pink Sunday on recognition of cancer awareness, and if, as a, we're glad to see all the pink that everyone wore in honor of that. Um, the Pastor's Aid will be celebrating their anniversary Sunday, November 12th, uh, during the morning service. Uh, November 18th, the Women Empowering Women Ministry will be hosting a brunch for the community of local churches, churches to come and connect with our First Lady, Ashley Counts. This will be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., and we're asking all the ladies, all the ladies, to bring a dish. <laughs> We don't, know, we don't want no men trying to sneak up in here, okay? <laughs> All the women are welcome. And as I said, we're asking you to bring your favorite dish prepared and ready to serve. Uh, the Buds of Promise outreach for this conference year will be collecting new and used toys in good condition for ages 8 and under. Uh, the toys will be donated to the New Britain Police Department. Uh, there is a basket located in the coat room, um, and that will be there until November 12th. Please help our buds reach their, their outreach project, their goal. And if you have any questions, you can see Sister Linda Kelly. Uh, trunk or Treat coming up this Tuesday. Um, that's from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, come join us for an environment of safe, fun trick-or-treating. Open to the entire community. Bring the little ones. And we are also still asking for candy donations. There is a bin in the coat room. Um, so that we have plenty of goodies for the children. There is also a shine-up sheet if you would like to, as I said, decorate your trunk, um, bring candy, or if you just want to volunteer and help out. 
the, uh, there will be a Thanksgiving Day dinner. This is going to be on Thursday, November 23rd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, this is sponsored by the Black Ministerial Alliance, the New Britain Police Department, the CCSU staff and students, Goodwin Tech staff and students, and the New Britain Fire Department. Uh, it's a sit-down meal served by the community volunteers. Um, if anyone does need a meal to be delivered, uh, there is contact information. We will have that for you. And they also will be giving out winter coats, hats, scarves, gloves, and gift bags will be given to each person that, you know, while supplies last. Okay. And in um, Monique's absence, I'm going to do a little presentation for the uh, missionaries uh, this morning. As we said, this is Cancer Sunday. We are trying to bring as much awareness to this as possible. Um, I'm going to ask um, Michelle Stewart to come up and also Janice Simmons. Where is she? I need her. <laughs> we have a little presentation for you. Uh, Michelle is and Janice are both cancer survivors. Um, I, I <laughs> yes, yes. Um, if you would like to share any of your experiences, that would be helpful. Okay. My cousin, Bianca Carter, had just did a podcast, and I thought it was so great about breast cancer awareness. She was talking about how one out of every woman here in Connecticut are suffering from breast cancer. White women get it more, but we die more from breast cancer, over 40%. So it's so important for us to raise awareness and to give support. And I just want to tell you all how much I have appreciated your support from my church family. Lynn, my class leader here, is still texting me every day. I am a cancer survivor for over a year now. I was diagnosed about this time. Thank you. I'm cancer-free, which is really great. But I saw a panel on BET the other day of cancer survivors, and they talked about even though we die more, those that have support are able to live more. It decreases your chances of death. So it's just so great for us to give support. One thing that I learned when I was in my whole battle is how much my family suffered so family members really, really need support. My husband was there, but my daughter was expecting him to crash and burn because of all the stress. Stress is such a killer. So let's really give as much support as we can. And thank you, my Spotswood family, for all of the support that you gave me. I was coming up today. Um, I just want to thank everybody um, during my journey, those who called, text, um, checking in on me. I truly appreciate it. This past week, I did a lesson for my after school program and teaching the girls about breast cancer, and they didn't know. Oh, sorry, I just ran from upstairs, downstairs. They didn't know, this group of girls didn't know that I had breast cancer. So I always like tease like about my hair and I'm like, oh God, my hair is in my way. And they're like, what? <laughs> so just teaching them. And then one of the questions was, do you know anybody who's had cancer? All the girls put me down. I'm like, y'all really don't know anybody. And even like the girls I had last year found out from that school, they put me down. And um, they were just saying like how I encourage them. They love the, the faith that I've had. Going through this, I am, I will say during a lot of my treatments, I was silly because um, I had to be me. I couldn't be somebody else. I couldn't be, well, was me. Oh, I'm tired. I kept it moving. I kept going. On Thursdays, whew, on Thursdays after treatment, I went to the grab and go, and they will say, like, seeing all the energy I had because of the steroids, it just had me, I had to burn that energy. 
Um, I got through it. Life is a little different. It took me a while to actually look at myself in the mirror because it's like this is a totally different person physically. Um, but mentally, I've just been me, and that's the only person I know how to be. When I found out, I said, God, you got me. Um, my family wasn't here. They were in South Africa when I found out. And I just sent them a text, and they called me, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, don't call because of I'm thinking of minutes and the charges, and they're like, no, 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 we got to make sure you're good. And, I mean, through it all, I think everybody. I want to thank you for the blessings, you know, that everyone, that the Lord bestowed on them in reference to this. And they are strong women, and we need to be strong for one another. And again, just reminding everyone, the women, please go get your mammograms, talk to your doctors. The worst thing is to not know. And then when you do know, it's too late. So we're just asking for blessings for everyone. And as always, we hope everyone gains a blessing from the morning service, and please do have a blessed week. Brian, are we ready? Uh, in our pastor's absence, he has a message. He is away today, as you have noticed. But he has sent and he has prepared a message for us this morning. And we have our guest minister, which is our own family, who will be bringing us the message this morning. But if you're ready, Brian, we will receive our pastor at this time. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, give God some praise right where you are. He is worthy to be praised. Well, good morning, Spot Nation. I miss you this morning. I really do. But you all are in good hands. So we still bless the Lord. And we know that the worship is going forth with power and authenticity as we celebrate Jesus. This Sunday is Pink Sunday, and I'm sure you look wonderful in your pink this morning as we celebrate Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I want to take this time to celebrate every survivor. Come on, let's give God praise for those who have survived breast cancer. God is a keeper. He is a healer, and he can bring you through your greatest test and your greatest tribulation. If you're going through breast cancer right now, we speak a ministry of healing to your body. If you're going through any other form of cancer, we are believing the report of the Lord that you shall be healed because by his stripes, we are healed. Glory be to God. Well, beloved, on this day, I want us to celebrate a daughter and son of this house who were just ordained deacons in the life of the Amy Zion Church. Let's give God praise for the now Reverend Omina McCoy. Let's give God praise for her elevation. Amen. And even though Pastor McCorkle is not here, we want to celebrate the now Reverend Isaiah McCorkle. We are so proud of the both of them as they were reared in this house. Their ministries were reared in this house. And we are so grateful that we have had a part in their spiritual formation. So let's clap our hands once again and celebrate both of them. Well, beloved, next Sunday, we are beginning a new series. That new series for the month of November is called The Audacity to Give Thanks. We are going to take intentional time to give the Lord thanks. He deserves our thanksgiving. He deserves our praise and he deserves our worship. So you don't want to miss any Sunday in November because we are going to give thanks. I also just want to take this time to present our preacher this morning. We thank God that even when I'm not present, 
The word is still in the house. And this morning we have the Reverend Burnett Dozier. She will be sharing the word of God. She may be retired. She may be superannuated on the rolls of the New England Annual Conference, but she's not tired yet. She serves as our Minister of Christian Education. She is very big on education. We know that in this place. And since that is who she is, she is always teaching. Her life is teaching. Her example is always to teach others, particularly children. So we thank God for the gift of Reverend Dozier. We ask that you pray for her this morning. Pray that God will give her a rhema word as we close out this series called Unlocking Your Purpose and Unlocking Your Potential. Believe God for his power to fall in this place and be open to receive what thus saith the Lord. So after our music ministry will share the sermonic selection, the next voice you will hear is the Reverend Burnett Dozier. So may God bless you and keep you is our prayer and see you next Sunday. Ooh.
Can you hear me? Ah, oh, yes, okay. Sound like that commercial. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am so glad to be here. I had to sing this song along with the choir because I'm so glad you're here. I looked up and I said, uh-oh, it's raining. Was it supposed to rain today? Nobody's going to come out. They're just going to sit there at home and, you know, get their hot cocoa or coffee or tea and say, who is that up there? I never see her up in the pulpit. So I thank, first of all, my daddy. You know him by the word God. And I know him by the word Daddy Yahweh for putting it into the pastor's mind to give me a chance to share what I am always talking to my self about and I thank Pastor Counts for having the courage to put me up here too because you know I um, I'm not always easy to understand but I'm going to try to be very clear my sermon today is based on the scripture Isaiah 55 and I will be reading verses 7 I mean I'm sorry 6 through 11 in the New International Version but I always encourage people to use whatever translation is most comfortable for them because the Bible doesn't mean anything if you don't understand what it says you know and those of us who grew up in the old King James, these and thous and what fors and all that, you know it didn't mean a thing. And then God inspired somebody to translate into our everyday English. Thank you, Jesus. All right, if you have it, then read along with me. Well, you read silently and I'll read it loud. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous 
their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will freely pardon. And God says this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for the word. You know that when pastor called me and asked me, I said, I don't know what to say and you said I got gotcha. you you gave me a word now please put me down into your spirit and let me deliver this word as you want it to be heard in Jesus name we pray amen the title of my sermon is you need to join him because you sure can't beat him. All right? This scripture begins with the admonition to seek ye the Lord while he may be found. But what does that really mean? Is God planning to hide from humans? Maybe he's planning to, uni to leave the universe and go somewhere else. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe God is going to turn his back on humankind so that we can't recognize him anymore and let us fend for ourselves. What do you think? Let's take a look at this. First of all, God isn't hiding. He has never operated that way. God enjoys being in the lives of human beings. Those who are his children can feel his spirit present among them us when we spend time in prayer or in his word. The Lord knows them that are his, and those that are his know and sense him as a part of their lives. Secondly, God isn't going anywhere. Let me say it like I would say it to my grandkids. God ain't going nowhere, okay? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. The whole universe belongs to God. So make no mistake about it. God is not going to vacate his property. All right? Thirdly, and this is the big one, if God turned his back on us, we would cease to exist. We draw each breath by God's grace. And we are able to draw that breath through God's mercy. We eat food and drink water because God created and sustained plants, animals, and water. So we can never, the world can never, the universe can never, continue to exist if God left us to fend for ourselves. So what do we think the prophet means when he says, seek ye? Doesn't that mean looking for? Look for? What does he mean when he says, while he may be found? Okay, we humans have a way of complicating life and even simple situations in life. We create biases and barriers. We seem to thrive on puzzles, controversy, and 
hatred. Where there is peace and harmony, someone always wants to cause chaos. God is accessible to us through his word and through the institutions he ordained to teach us about his will. But some people deliberately try to make people mistrust the Bible or try to undermine the sacrifice of Jesus. With all these satanic interferences in learning about God, there just may come a time when getting to know him and his ways and our purpose in his kingdom will be nearly impossible. Humans may replace knowledge of the true God with some whacked out version of man's making. And you see it happening sometimes. God does not act in or support hatred. Christians, let me, let me go back and say it. Christians who spew hatred and create barriers are therefore not Christian. Christian means, Christian means Christ-like. Okay? And Christ never spewed hate or created barriers to get to him. God does not support sin. Man has begun saying certain sins are not sins and God doesn't mind them. I don't know what God they're talking about. This is not seeking what what God's purpose is for our lives. What God does support and has clearly stated as man's purpose is faith. In Hebrews 11:6, Paul says, without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him, that's God, must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Believing that he exists means believing that his word is perfect, that his will is perfect, and that his way, his way is perfect. The true believer wants to do things God's way, not man's way. They want to follow God's will, not man's will with all its confusion, and prejudice, and just plain meanness within. The next part of the scripture says, let the wicked give up their wickedness and their ungodly thoughts. This means their thoughts are not lined up with or approved by God. It tells us to seek God, to get to know his will and his way through his word, and he will forgive you your sins. Join his family and follow him, and he will give you a way to his mercy and to his forgiveness. He gave us this access 2,000 years ago. Yeah, 2,000 years. We call that access way Jesus Christ the righteous, our Savior and our brother. No matter how mean, selfish, greedy, unforgiving, biased, guilty, and complicated we are with other people, God is willing to forgive us if we, what? Repent. We must rethink what we believe in order to line up with God's way of thinking because his ways, his thoughts, and who he is is so much higher, so much better, and so much more noble than anything that ever entered into the mind of any full-blooded human who ever has or ever will live. We know it. The only perfect person was Jesus, and he was the son of God, not the son of Joseph. Okay? You see... God has a purpose for everything he has ever said or done, for every person he has ever created. He doesn't make it rain or snow because he's bored. 
He is sustaining the earth. You may, you may ask what his purpose for flooding the lands was. And I will ask what was man's purpose for destroying the forests that hold back the flood waters, for overmining the earth that supported the trees and other God-made ways to hold the rivers in check. Don't blame God. Look at man. All right? God makes provisions for our food and our shelter. Man makes it difficult for the poor to get food or find a place to stay. God gives us beauty and joy. Man calls it ugly. God encourages our repentance and gives us the path to forgiveness. Man hounds some people for minor mistakes while saying other people's sins aren't sins anymore. Finally, God says that when he expresses his thoughts through his written, spoken, and living word, that thought will always bear godly fruit. God has no purposeless thoughts or words. He said it, he meant it, and man can't change it. Listen again to what God says. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return void or empty. It will always accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Therefore, God had and still has a purpose for giving us the Bible. His written word and Jesus, his living word. We are to immerse ourselves in and completely follow his word and never try to change it to justify our own sense of right and wrong. God has a purpose that we either embrace it by joining his family or we try to ignore him and attempt to create our own purpose. I'm reading a book right now called Ridiculous Faith by Shandran Thomas. He tells us about King Saul and Shepherd David. God chose Saul to be the savior of Israel because you know at the time all the people around were attacking Israel. Sound familiar? And God told the people it was okay to have a king. And he said to Samuel, anoint Saul to be king. Saul's tall, Saul's strong. Saul will bring them out of this. But Saul got scared and tried to change the script to protect him. Saul's lack of faith caused him to miss his purpose. But God's purpose will not be thwarted. So God turned to little David. David was about 14. You know, and he turned to little David who fought a giant problem with a rock and the word of God. So, and I'm finished now, to paraphrase Joshua at the end of the book of Joshua, choose you today. Will you choose God's will and his purpose for you? Or the world's way. As for me, and I hope for the family, I choose to join the Lord. Amen. Maybe you're still a little confused about what you will choose. Maybe you're a little shaky about what's wrong with some of man's ways. So what you need to do is take it to
to the way that God gave us thousands of years ago to help you figure it out. He gave us prayer. And maybe you're saying, you know what? I, I think I know which one I'll choose. I'm going to choose to be part of God's family. As a part of his family, I'll be able to turn to him anytime I want. Even in the middle of my job or my school, I can find a quiet moment to ask God what I should do. So join his family. We're open all the time up here at the altar to accept you. And maybe you say, well, you know what? I can't do this on my own. I need to join a family as well as to join God's universal family. That's why God ordained Spot Good and many other good, godly, loving churches. But I can only talk about Spotswood because we love you. We don't know who you are. We don't know your face. And there's some things we, as godly children, don't care about. We don't care what church you went to before or that you didn't go to church. We don't care We don't care how old or how young you are. You know, we don't care if you were the biggest, baddest sinner on the block up until you heard God tell you to come on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you feel God calling you, you know, they used to say it really formally today, and you hear the call of his voice come forth. Yeah. If you feel something saying, go up there and let those ministers counsel you, if you feel something tearing your heart and saying, what you were doing just ain't going to cut it anymore, then come. Or sometimes you just say, I look, all, look forward all week just to come and say, thank you, God, in his altar, at his altar, in his building. Whatever your reason for coming, come to the altar. Or if, you, if you're like me and you say, you know what? I'm just going to sit here and talk to God because God is everywhere in this place. That's okay, too. You know, Jesus once said, my burden is light and my yoke is easy. So you don't have to do flips and go through hoops to get to God. All you have to do is tell him what you need. Tell him how you feel. And he's more than pleased to say, come, my good and faithful servant, and become my loving child. So come. The altar is open for prayer, for forgiveness, for joining the family.
Father God. Father, Father, Father. I remember the first time I heard a pastor's wife call you daddy. She kneeled, knelt right at this altar and said, Daddy God, hello, it's Peggy. And I'm here to say, you are a daddy, a comforting, loving daddy. You are our father, but you are our daddy. And we thank you. We thank you for this rain today. And we thank you for the sunshine yesterday and tomorrow. We thank you for whatever you give us, Lord, because whatever it is, your purpose is in love and kindness and never in hatred or what they used to call a quixotic attitude. I do it because I feel like doing it. You are love, God, and we love you because you first loved us. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, there are people at this altar and in these pews and throughout this country who have great needs. And some may feel that their needs are not as important because of the needs of others. We have communities all around this country suffering because somebody grabbed a gun in hatred. Lord, have mercy upon those grieving families and welcome those people that the hatred took away from them. Welcome them into your kingdom and give them rest and finally peace. We have countries invading other countries and fighting because they don't like the way a person looks or they don't like the way a person speaks or the way that those people worship you. Lord, help them to see that you love all your children and it doesn't matter what language they worship you in. It doesn't matter whether they go to mosque, synagogue, or church. They are still your children. Help them to find you before they have put up barriers that they can't overcome. Before they have killed so many that they can't get the guilt out of their hearts. Lord, have mercy as you always do on those who are trying to become what you want them to become. Lord, if you see a need that has been bottled up, I know that you will break open that barrier and address that need. I know that there are people who are fighting what they consider mental illness. Many times it's something that just doesn't allow them to fit into the world around them. Help them, Lord. Help them to overcome whatever their illness is, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, so that they can live a more comfortable life, Lord. Let them know that you are there. And no matter what anybody else says about them, you will help them get through it. These blessings we ask for, and we continue to ask for even though you have given them to us. We never want you to turn from us. And we know you won't hide from us. So we thank you again in the name of our precious Savior and brother, Jesus Christ, the righteous, the propitiation for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. Thank you, God, and amen.
morning, Spotswood. We reached a very special time within our service. God has given us so much here at Spotswood as evidence by just the mere presence of everybody that's here today. I want to say this, that when this old life is over with, and God offers that rhetorical question as to what did you do with your life? I personally want to say, God, I spent it with you. Each and every week, we have an opportunity to show God Almighty that we are spending our lives with him. Not just from the monies that we give, but also by the way Reverend Dozier preached today, and she talked about love. He wants us to share love. Cancer survivors, those that's going through it, family members, as Sister Copes talked about today, people are hurting. Things happen within our lives. Give your heart to God. He just wants us to love each other and do the very best we can. So those that's joining us virtually today and those that's here physically, now is a good time to show the love and the spirit of God. We can do that, Spotswood. We do it every week. So I thank you in advance for your gifts, your love, everything that we're all about. The screen tells you how you can give something back to God. He asked us for 10%. We all know that. We've been knowing it since we were very little. But the ushers, the stewards are in front of us. The ushers will lead us now. And they will lead us from the back of the church. We will go around and go back to our seats. I want to thank you so much in advance for your gifts, your love, and everything that we are about here at Spotswood, because I know what we are about. Thank you again. Amen.
we just thank God for the word that we heard this morning. And we continue to pray for our Reverend Dozier this morning. For do you, you better get to know him, she said, because you sure can't be him. And we know that we need the Lord every day of our lives. And we just thank God for sending her to this morning to bless us. So we're going to prepare for our recessional at this time. And Reverend Dozier will lead us in our benediction as we recess out. God bless you. God, our Father, may there be honor, glory, dominion, and power, henceforth now and forevermore, let us praise his name and thank him. Amen. <laughs> 